Hey everyone, Car Cafe here with a, another deck profile, this time with Lascaria Valino. I know obviously this isn't a brand new card to set to. She's been out since one of the Divine Z era, but she had some really cool upgrades I thought was worth waiting to do the deck profile and talking about after set two came out as well as a couple of different additions from Festival Collection that I think have made this deck uh, pretty good. Certainly better than it was in set one and able to contend a little bit better with the meta. So we'll talk about her now. Let's start with her ride line. Has her own very specific one, which we like to see these days. As always, obviously the starter is your generic going second draw card when wrote upon. But the grade one and the grade two, as usual, are a lot much more interesting. The grade one says when she's wrote upon by a grade two with Lascaria in her name, which, spoiler alert, they all do, uh, you get to search your deck for a grade two or greater blitz order without regalis piece um, and put it into your hand and shuffle a deck, no sort of discard or anything, which is nice. So just a free plus one to your hand for a blitz order specifically, which as we go along through this deck profile, you'll see is very important for anyone who doesn't know what this deck does. It is a very blitz order focused deck. So being able to search for one right out of the get-go and put it into your hand is very nice. We like that a lot for free, no less. Second then with the grade two, when she is rode upon by a grade three with Ascaria in her name, you get to look at the top five cards of your deck and take a... Uh, either a normal unit with Valino in its name or a Blitz Order and put it into your hand, shuffle your deck. Again, no cost to discard, just free, which we really love that. Uh, obviously, it's a top five, not search your deck, so there is the potential to whiff, but it doesn't happen super a lot because the most of your deck is Valino, normal units, and Blitz Orders. So very low chance that you'll whiff on that, but good that you can take. Now let's talk about the main lady herself, because she's an interesting card. Certainly one of the more unique units, kind of like um, the Direful Dolls that has just a kind of unique mechanic we haven't seen before in the Divine Z era or overdress in general, really. That's because she's got two skills. The first is a continuous, just um, during your turn, if you have three or more units with Valino in their name, all of your Valino units get 5,000 power. So just a nice free 5k buff to the board, assuming they're all Valino units, which most of the time they will be. So that's nice, and then it's free and continuous, which is also good. But then also, if you have five or more Valino units on the board, she gets an extra crit. So that's good for just applying pressure to your opponent. Pretty much every turn, she is going to be swinging with a crit while your, your opponent also has to be at grade three. So if you're going first, your first grade three turn, she won't have the crit, but you do still get the 5k buff to the board, which can be good for just pushing, especially while they're on grade two. And then after that, every turn, as long as you have those five units, she'll get the crit. So your opponent is always going to basically have to commit to perfect guarding her because she's also giving 5k buff to herself and anything boosting her. And a lot of the boosters in this deck get inherent power themselves. So she ends up being usually a very big column, usually around the 30 to 40k line, that they're just being forced to perfect guard every time. And you only have four perfect guards, so <laughs> eventually they'll run out or just not see them. But then she has a second effect, and this is arguably the more interesting effect, which is at the end of the battle that she was attacked specifically. Um, and if she did not get hit, and if you played a blitz order during that battle, you get to draw a card, and if you haven't countercharged yet, you can countercharge one. So the countercharge one is really nice because you do have a good amount of counterblast with some other units, so it's good to be able to refund that at least once during your opponent's turn. But what really is important is that draw effect. Every time that you play a blitz order in a battle and survive that battle, you get to draw a card. Now, that doesn't mean you can play like three blitz orders in one battle and then draw three cards. It only counts one blitz order, but that is still refunding you a card for playing the blitz order. So you get to basically net even and stop an attack. So this is a very defensive deck focused around blitz orders and drawing cards on your opponent's turn to keep surviving. So that's really nice and just a cool kind of unique mechanic that really utilizes blitz orders in a way that we hadn't seen before. So really cool card. And one that is fun to use just because she also is free. If you notice, none of those cost anything and her second skill refunds the cost. So we do run three extra copies of her. Just Persona Riding is Persona Riding. Uh, no Grail because the Regalis piece is taken up by another uh, 
piece, for lack of a better word, that we'll see in a second. So just three persona rides, and I don't really need to explain why. Uh, but then our other grade three is this boy. This is your primary attacker <laughs> in this deck, the bug boy. Uh, so he's a grade three, and he's pretty simple. Just that once per turn at the end of the battle, that your grade three or greater vanguard uh, with Lascaria in her name attacked an opponent's grade three or greater vanguard, you can counterblast one, restand this unit, and if you have three or more Valino units on the board, he gets 5,000 power. So for those keeping track at home, remember Valino's giving all your Valino units 5,000 power, and then he's getting it on another 5,000 power on the restand. So the first time he swings, he's 18. Restand, he becomes 23. Unboosted, no persona ride. On a persona ride, he's 33. Any of your boosters that also gain additional power, you're looking at like 48, 53 K line. So this gets really big. <laughs> um, makes it difficult for your opponent to stop. And if you check any triggers or use any orders that we'll go over later, makes this even deadlier. So as so long as you have two of these, it's a pretty consistent five attack deck. You just got to make sure you see them, which is why we run four, because you want to have two in the front row as soon as possible. So four copies there. Good card is good. We love restanders. Now, before going into the grade two units, I think we'll just kind of quickly go over the blitz orders that we're playing. So, firstly, the main one, that should be no surprise to anyone who knows the stack, <laughs> the really stupid one, uh, the Dream Blade, the one with Valeno on the front, is a very simple blitz order, but very good. As it just says, you play this for the cost of Energy Blast 2, so a very cheap energy cost to play. You choose the unit being attacked, it gets 20,000 power, so pretty big shield, a 20k shield essentially. Um, but then it has an additional text which says you can play one more Blitz Order this turn. Now, that skill is not once per turn, like a hard once per turn, like you cannot use this effect again even if you play this card. Not how this works. You play this during a battle, stop the attack, whatever. Unit, opponent attacks with another unit. You play another one of these, it's a skill activates again. You can now play another Bliss Order on another attack, and so on and so forth. So if you, as long as you have multiple of these, you can just keep playing Blitz Orders, even though technically you're restricted to one Blitz Order um, during your opponent's turn. This gets around that and lets you play multiple Blitz Orders. So why for sure you play four of this in this deck, because you want to see this as soon as possible. You want to play multiple of these as many times as possible. Next, we're playing the Sweet Honey Garden Blitz Order, one of these. Uh, this one's also just very simple. You just play this with a Soul Blast 1, and you choose one of your units, and it gets 15,000 power until the end of the battle. If your drop zone has a Blitz Order, though, which is always going to have in this deck, you're always going to have a Blitz Order in your drop zone, um, it's a 25k shield instead of 15. So which is the first Soul Blast 1, it's a 5k bigger shield than the Valino order. So just pure and simple, slightly bigger shield for a Soul Blast, which you're not really using your Soul Blast for much else in this deck. So totally fine cost there. And lastly, I am playing the uh, Evergreen Transfer Regalis Peace Blitz Order. This is an interesting little Blitz Order, very similar to the Sweet Honey Garden Blitz Order. You play it with a Soul Blast 1, and one of your units gets 25k power, 25k shield, however you want to think about it. But then it has an additional effect, which is you choose one of your vanguards and gets the red text continuous skill. All of your opponent's units with 100 million power get minus one crit. So this is just an anti over trigger card. <laughs> if your opponent checks the over trigger, gets their 100 million power, you can just play this and say, nope, that 100 million unit no longer has a crit. Now, of course, there are uh, over triggers that give a crit. Like the Stoikeo one, like the blue over trigger, like the Brankade over trigger, where you're only just minusing the crit by one, so they still do damage. But most of the other ones don't. Um, so you're negating a lot of the impact of that 100k power. So while there are other Regalis pieces you could run, I certainly was thinking about Caliburn in this deck just for the counter charge. Um, or the draw two, honestly, but I'm very anti over here, so I like having something that can block them. And this being a blitz order just feels like it fits really well in this deck. So I run that. 
if you want to run a different blitz order and then run like Caliburn or Ladder, I, I think that's fine. It's up to you. That's kind of just more personal preference. Uh, that's all the blitz orders I run though, just those six. And you'll see why in a little bit. But moving on to the grade two units, we are running four of Mr. Bugman. Another very important card. This is one of the brand new units from set two. Um, one of the main reasons we waited to do the deck profile, because this card is very good. <laughs> um, he's got two skills. The first is when he's placed on rear guard, if you have a grade three or greater unit with a Lascari in her name, you soul blast two. And then you get to choose a unit uh, with Valeno in its name, that's a different name from this. So you can't just spam him, and you get to call it to Rearguard, um, essentially. So it's a free just call back to the board from the drop zone. Sorry, you get to Solus to call from drop zone to Rearguard. You're mainly looking for this guy. If you like, discarded him for ride line, or if your opponent like destroyed it or something, you can just use this Solus to call it right back to the board. So that's good. We love reviving from drop zone. Solus to is kind of a big cost, but again, aside from your blitz orders you're not using your soul for anything so it's not a big deal i've never had an issue with soul in this deck so that's fine what's also fun about this card is his second skill which is just as continuous during your turn if you have three or more units with Valino in their name he gets boost and another 5k power so between that and Valino giving all Valino units um 5000 power uh, this is a 20k booster in the back row. So this is what I'm talking about where you get really, really big lines with these two together. Like this being a 53k line during your uh, Persona Ride turn after the restand. 53. So like that's nothing to sneeze at. And that behind Valino with a crit is also pretty scary and really forcing out the perfect guard. Because then that's what 1838... 48 on persona right turn so just helps you make some really big numbers that makes it hard for your opponent to hard guard so definitely four of that for the 20k booster and four recalling from the drop zone and then we're running one of this older card from set one mainly just because it is a Bellino unit <laughs> um this one isn't not nearly as good <laughs> as mr bugman um this one just says when it's placed um on rear guard other than during the battle phase uh, if you have a grade three grader with Lascaria in its name, you discard a card from your hand and choose a different card name uh, from your drop and call it to rear guard uh, if it's a grade three or less. And if it's a blitz order, you put it into your hand. So this can be a neat way to just kind of recycle blitz orders back to your hand um, or also just kind of getting units back from your drop zone. But the discard kind of hurts. A lot of time you don't really want to be doing that. So we don't love that cost, and so I only run one because it's also not getting any additional power on its own. It's just a 10k kind of dead card after you play it. But good for a pinch in emergency. So and it has the Valeno name. Just to make sure to round that out. Next, the one non-Valeno normal unit we are running is two copies of the Stoikea Keter Sanctuary Dual Nation from Festival Collection. Uh, this card uh, can be hit or miss really depending on what deck you're playing it in, but in this deck, she's really good. And the reason why is her skill is when she's placed um, rear guard from hand, uh, other during the battle phase, you get to look at the top card of the deck and either leave it on top or discard it. So right there, that's always good no matter what deck you're in because you're getting to check what you're going to drive check. Or just put something in the drop zone like your grade three that you have all these other skills to revive back from the drop zone. So that's nice, but then also you then counter blast one and you get to either put a normal order from your drop zone back into your hand, or you can call a grade two or greater unit from the drop zone to the rear guard. So just like you're saying, great little combo there. If you see this off the top, discard it, counter blast one, call it to the board. So we love that great little, and again, recursion from the drop zone, lots of ways of just getting things back, but also recycling normal orders, which is the only way to do that in this deck. You have ways of getting your blitz orders back, but not normal orders. And we are playing a few that we'll get to in a little bit. Um, so she's really good for that. Not a Valeno unit though, so I don't like running more copies of her. I think two is just a really good tech option to be able to set up your drive checks a little bit and also recur from the drop zone. So good card. I wouldn't really run more than two of though, in this deck at least. And then lastly, speaking of orders, we are playing one 
copy of Nectar of Sensationalism. This is a cool little order from way back. I think it's at two of, yeah, set two of Overdress. So pretty simple card that just says you choose one of your rear guards and that unit gets 5,000 power for every five cards in your drop zone. If there are 15 cards in your drop zone, it also gets a crit. So this is kind of the card you're holding on to for the end game. You're stalling up the game because you're playing a lot of Blitz Orders, you're a tanky deck. You grind out until you have 15 cards in your drop zone, holding on to this or using this to put this back into your hand if you lost it. Um, and then you play this onto your grade three restandard. Your grade three restandard now becomes plus 15 to 20, depending on how long the game has gone. If you have 20 cards in your drop zone, it doesn't cut off at 15. If you have 20 cards in your drop zone, you're gonna get 20K power and the crit. So all of a sudden he is now 33 unboosted, no persona ride with a crit, 38 on the restand that your opponent now has to stop. So great to do if your opponent's at like four damage. Now you've got this and Valino both swinging in with crits that they have to deal with. So it's a great way to kind of finish out the game. Uh, space is a little tight. I would maybe run more than run like two, but for right now one is fine. You do see it a good amount just because you're going to, again, the games go long. You're a grindier deck. Um, you'll eventually see it. Next, another one of the original Valeno cards and also still arguably one of the best uh, Valeno units next to Bugman. And the Restander is your grade one Flore. A very good card. <laughs> and the reason is when she's placed on rear guard from anywhere, which is important. Um, you, uh, if you have a Vanguard with a Scar in its name, does not have to be grade three. So you can play this as soon as you have Counterblast. You can uh, check the top five cards of your deck, choose one card with Valeno its name or a Blitz Order, put it into your hand, shuffle your deck. No discard associated with that, by the way, just the Counterblast. So you can check top five, put any Valena unit or any Blitz Order, which by the way, includes Sanctitude, <laughs> um, and just put it into your hand. Now it is a top five, occasionally you'll whiff, but again, rare in this deck because of the amount of Valeno units and Blitz Orders. So very good card, but that's not it. She also just has the continuous during your turn. If you're Vanguard with Scar in a name, she gets 2000 power. So she's a 10K plus with Valeno's 5K bump, she's a 15K booster. So that's what I'm about both between her and Bugman in the back, they're 15 or 20k boosters. So they're making your lines just hit bigger. And that's why we run four, because the search off the top five is really good to find your pieces. And then also just being a consistent 15k booster is really nice. Next, we're running two others of the new card, the Cadia. This is a cool, interesting card. And the main reason we're running a lower count of Blitz Orders. And that's because he says at the end of your turn, if you have five or more units with Valeno in their name, you counterblast one, put this unit on the bottom of your deck, and you get to choose up to two Blitz Orders from your drop zone and put them back into your hand. So this is your main recycle for Blitz Orders. It is you wait till you have two Blitz Orders in your drop zone, usually the two main Valeno ones. You counterblast one at the end of the turn, throw this at the bottom, put them back in your hand. You just plus two from the draw. You just plus two 20k shields back into your hand <laughs> that you can play more than once on your opponent's turn. So really good card. Um, not really doing a whole lot outside of that though, and you're not always going to have two Blitz Orders in your drop zone. So that's why we only run two and don't run more. But again, you will see this just because of your searching and everything you can do, you'll find him and get to the point where you'll have the two Blitz Orders and then be able to just kind of blast and put them back. So great tech card for just recycling your Blitz Orders, but no need to run more than two. And next, just to help find our pieces because we are a piece deck we are running three copies of mythiarch habitat we all know and love this card if you play soikea just a quick simple for free uh when you play it look at the top seven cards of your deck call a unit to rear guard or put another copy of mythiarch into your hand simple really good card who doesn't love a top seven call to board um it has to be obviously equal or grade to grade than your vanguard you can't call the grade three if you're on like grade two but otherwise call whatever you want um and because again like where you have your pieces that you're looking for really great one is to get this because like i said she's can activate her skill in place from anywhere so mythy arc into her and immediately use her skill to check another top five is a really nice combo um space is tight and you need your valino units in blitz order so you can't really afford to run four but three is a good number you'll still see it and you can recycle these uh with the uh, donation card so 
that ends up working out very nicely and something I do a lot. And lastly, good old your Sanctitude and Three Nation Perfect Guards. Like I mentioned, Sanctitude is just kind of funny in this deck in particular because your grade one girl uh, can search it off the top and put it into your hand. <laughs> so that's always fun. Um, but also, we all know Sanctitude does. If your opponent's Vanguard has the text triple drive, you can Perfect Guard without discarding. And then also gets around uh, guard restricts because of going to the order zone instead of the guardian circle. And then nation perfect guards. If you have one of those cards in your hand, you also don't have to pay the discard cost for perfect guarding. Same old, same old. Triggers uh, should not shock people, but this is eight crit. Um, you're a pretty tanky deck and can be pretty aggressive because you can pretty consistently have your five attacks. But if you get like damage denied or just don't see the grade three, you're only doing like four or three attacks. So we like to put on more pressure with crits, especially because our Vanguard has a crit. So your opponent really cannot afford at any situation to just take Valino, assuming the crit's live and it's not the first grade three turn uh, because you're running a crit. And so you just want to maximize on that pressure. A crit is a crit. Um... The go to soul crit, it uh, doesn't super matter. Like I said, I don't think I've ever had a soul issue despite having the blitz orders that soul blast and the soul blast two bug boy. Um, but you're, you persona right in this deck and it, again, it's never been an issue, but you have that, I guess, as a backup if you really need it. But if you don't have the go to soul ones, I wouldn't worry too much about it in this deck. Uh, the off trigger, I'm running fronts. So while there isn't, a lot of inherent draw power in this deck. You are drawing a card every time you use a Blitz Order with Valino, so you're recouping some losses there. You're putting Blitz Orders from Drop Zone back into your hand with the Grade 1 Cicada card. So drawing isn't a super big deal just because of how tanky this deck can be. What we need is offense. We're already hitting some good numbers. We want to make those numbers even bigger. If we got those crits going because of sensationalism, we want to be hitting those front triggers. Uh, so here we are. And also helping on the tank side, it's another 20k shield. So between this and the Blitz Order, you have seven 20k shields in your hand. So really it certainly helps offset the fact that you're not drawing a super lot of cards. Heals, uh, this is more just kind of medical because of my locals because they're just people obsessed with Shirnui and Luard. Um, so I'm still running these, but really you can switch these out with more copies of these. You definitely should be running at least one of each of both of them, especially the crit one because of Blainmire and Zorga. And then obviously the Reestand is just Varga and Shirnui both still running around, Varga especially. So definitely run these these it really depends on what your people at locals are doing that's a lot just keep that in mind over trigger uh i'm running the stokea over trigger uh because the stokea over trigger just does everything who doesn't love drawing two cards getting a front trigger getting a crit and healing and damage if you have equal of more than your opponent so i like all the effects i think it's just kind of a better version of the blue over trigger, even though blue over trigger calls from or puts a card from your drop into hand, this is at least drawing you two cards. So that's kind of nice and giving you a front and also still giving you the crit. And like I said, and the healing. So it's just like doing a lot of things that other over triggers are doing pieces of, but this is just doing all of it. So I like it better. If you'd rather run like the blue over trigger or one of like the new ones, the purple or the yellow one, I don't think either of those are like super useful in this deck. I guess if you really wanted to run the yellow one, maybe for this, the extra draw power and the uh, uh, retiring your opponent's units. But Stoikea trigger, I think, is just always going to be good. There's never a bad time to check the Stoikea over triggers, the main thing I like about it. So I recommend running the Stoikea. And that's it. So, yeah, good, very tanky deck. Like Direful Dolls, just very different. That's the thing that kind of drew me to it. It was, it was a unique deck that we hadn't really seen before in Overdress. So, and it's fun to play. You know, it's a little different. You got to think a little bit different. Simple in some ways. Like, you're just looking for your grade three bug to spash and fake swing five times. But then managing your blitz orders in your hand, managing how you guard effectively, time the counter charge, and making sure you're drawing cards off the blitz orders and all that stuff. You know, it's cool. I feel like I hope they keep printing more and more cards for it and more Valina units that are interesting and doing different things. 
and obviously more interesting blitz orders too will make the deck cooler and more interesting but yeah that's this deck profile if you have questions definitely shoot them down in the comments i'm happy to talk things through and you'll be hearing more from us soon thanks bye